Welcome to DLD College London. Thank you for your time this morning. We're talking today about our exciting new year nine curriculum and we have our head of um, our vice principal academic, Dr. Sarah Watson, who will be presenting to you today. Um, I hope you enjoy the session. We'll have a mini Q&A at the end and um, any questions afterwards, please don't hesitate to contact us um, and we'll send you a recording after. So Sarah, um, I'll hand over to you. Thank you so much, Rachel, and welcome everybody, wherever you are in the world or the UK, it's great to see so many of you. So welcome to what is a very exciting time in the long history of DLD College London, um, a school established in 1931 with a very long history and tradition for the first time introducing year nine for 13 year olds from September 2023. So in choosing DLD, what you're choosing essentially is a potential five year pathway for your child. And so it's really important to understand the school as a whole uh, to enable you to understand where year nine sits within that. It's a community that really does lead the way in innovation and international education where your child will be mixing with students from currently 58 different nationalities around the world. And of course, that does lead them to become internationally minded, compassionate, creative thinkers, and hopefully leaders of communities. As you can see from the photograph there, there are some of our students, and that is taken on uh, the 18th floor of the school building, which is right in the heart of London, opposite Big Ben, you can see there, and the Houses of Parliament. You can see in the photo, we don't wear uniform. We refer to staff by their first name. However, please don't mistake this for a lack of discipline. The discipline is very much focused on having conversations around how's your day going, how are you feeling? How is chemistry going for you, for example? And chats about your progression rather than what color socks you're wearing or how tight your tie is done up, for example. So we are quite an innovative school in that sense and how we approach our curriculum is no different. Sorry, just hopefully moving on there. So DLD, we really do pride ourselves on our students and the students that we create and how they are at the end of a DLD education. But we're also proud, as any school would, to have our work recognised internationally. And you can see just some of the awards that we've won there, Independent School of the Year Award, Awards for Mental Health and Wellbeing, Boarding School of the Year, Excellence and in Innovation, et cetera, et cetera. And more of those are on our website uh, to peruse at your at your leisure. We also try to position ourselves as the expert voice within the educational, international and domestic market as well. So for example, we're one of the first schools to start brand new esports, uh, BTEX and other courses as well. And you'll see that in this series of webinars, which lasts a whole year, you will see experts from DLD College London speaking about a whole range of topics there, um, some very traditional and some very modern. So if you are interested in specific elements of education, then please do feel to tap into that uh, webinar series, even if you don't feel like your child is going to come to DLD, it's still a great source of information. So I wanted to talk you through where Year 9 sits within a student's full DLD academic journey with us. From September 2023, we are opening our doors to Year 9, and I'm going to go through that programme in a lot more detail over the next few slides. But it's important to see what is on offer for your child as they work their way through the five years of school. We provide a very bespoke curriculum. That means that students can choose what programme to follow, what pathway to follow, what subjects to follow, not just dependent on where their interest lies in terms of subjects, but where their skill set lies, where their preference of learning style lies as well. So once a child has completed year nine, there are options to make going into year 10. There is the two year GCSE and BTEC combination programme that we would expect most students to go into. That enables students to choose a range of uh, GCSEs and BTECs in whatever combination suits them. So there is the option to choose up to 10 full GCSE subjects, a very, very traditional pathway you might expect or you might say. 
And then there are also a host of exciting new BTEC options as well. The BTECs are recognised by universities as equivalent qualifications at both GCSE and at A-level. We have different level BTECs there. And the universities are really now up to date with recognising the skill and the effort and energy that those BTEC courses take. So it's a really solid choice. The difference with a BTEC as opposed to a GCSE, which many of us are probably more familiar with, is the style of learning and the style of assessment. Students who like to be quite hands on, students who like to work on longer term projects rather than two hour exams, for example, students who like to collect qualitative and quantitative data and work on producing longer term outcomes really are suited to BTEC programmes. You can also combine a series of BTECs with a series of GCSEs, or you might just have one option of BTEC that you're really, really interested in. So, for example, you can do um, you can either do GCSE art or you can do BTEC sport. You can do a traditional route of GCSE film studies or economics, and you can combine that with um, a business BTEC enterprise. BTEC Performing Arts is also very popular, which is a collaborative course amongst many of the arts faculty. And also BTEC Esports, which we have a brand new Esports Arena suite. And that course includes competitions on the international scene, as well as visits to the Esports University at the Olympic Park in London. It's not just about playing video games, as uh, some of us might think. It is very much around business, media, and what that looks like for the modern day industry. We also have English literature, English language courses at GCSE, and also for students whose English is not, um, not sustainable enough to uh, fully complete an English literature GCSE, we also have separate classes for students who would take IELTS exams, who would, which would be the international students um, who don't feel they're, they're quite at the level of being able to study English literature. We have the double science course for GCSE, where you'll study physics, chemistry and biology, and you will um, come out of school with two GCSEs. That's very much the norm across the UK. However, if you are a student who really wants to be looking towards, uh, say, medicine or something else within the sciences at university, then we do offer, offer an upgrade to triple science GCSE in year 11. So there are so many options at GCSE Pathway uh, and BTEX throughout year 10 and 11. And we in year nine, the, the great thing about having students in DLD in year nine is that we can really guide them in year nine into making choices that are right for them when they go into year 10 and 11 so that they can commit to those courses from the start and really get the best out of the time spent in year 10 and 11. We do have a one year GCSE program, um, but that's really reserved for students who are coming into us directly into year 11 and uh, are maybe a little bit older than, uh, than they would ordinarily be. That course does not offer the same choices. It is a fixed pathway for students. So we would expect any students coming into us for year nine would follow the normal traditional progression route into year 10 and 11, and therefore have all of those options available to them. Once students get sixth form, I won't go into too much detail about this as it might be a while off for some of you, but we have the traditional A-level program uh, where students would choose three or four A-levels to study. Um, that would take two years, so years 12 and 13. And we also have an 18 month program for students who are coming in from overseas. And that would be for business, maths and economics only as a package to start in January. We also have the BTEC program. BTECs run for two years and they are very specialised. So at the moment, we run very successful BTECs in business and separately in media. And that goes very much in depth. So you would spend all of the time you might spend on three A levels. You would spend all of that just looking at business, the various different elements of business. It's great for students who really know what they want to do, what they want to go into, and they get um, a, an extra depth of learning in that subject compared with somebody doing an A level in that particular subject. For sixth form, there are over 30 different subjects and courses available to choose from. So again, we do a lot of work with our students in year 10 and 11 in guiding them towards what might be their best option in sixth form. So coming to a school, any school, um, for a 
for the full five years from my experience as an educator for 15 years, I would say is really the best thing that you can do for your child to give them the stability and to give them the opportunity to have somebody who really knows them over that time and can therefore guide them at these important stages in their school career. As well as the traditional subjects and the more innovative subjects that you can choose from, we also have supplementary courses. So, for example, um, students will be doing a careers and professional development course, uh, as, uh, which will be in their timetable. Here we are looking at what are the current skills that employers are looking for and what should we be thinking about in our career. For example, we cover things like social media, what it means to be an influencer. Does that just mean trying to go on holiday for free? Well, no, it means being a real expert in something that you can then influence other people in using technology. So really looking with students at things that influence them, things that they see, essentially the world that they live in but making sure that they're looking at it through a realistic uh, lens so that they are making fully informed choices. We also have personal social health uh, and economic education as is statutory in the UK, study and life skills courses as well, and of course, sports to keep us mentally and physically healthy. So I'd now like to move on to looking at just the year nine course in particular. If you're interested in the year 10 and above, then there will be further webinars for that. Uh, and there have previously been ones you can get recordings for. But in this one, I'm just going to focus on year nine as it is our new program. So coming into year nine, what will students get? They will get the core subjects. They're really fundamental to making sure that students have the necessary literacy and numeracy skills to enable them to access all of the other subjects and um, to build on being able to go into year 10 and 11. So in mathematics, your ch child will study mathematics uh, to do foundational numeracy and core mathematics. English, we will study English language, English literature, and for those students who haven't yet got a full grasp of English, who may be on from the international market, academic English courses as well, to look at English, not just in a communication tool, but in an academic context. And then students will study a course uh, which is known uh, called science, but will include elements of biology, chemistry and physics so that they have a good, solid foundational knowledge that enables them to access all of the courses available to them uh, in year 10. This is where our course gets particularly uh, innovative, and this is our interdisciplinary aspect. Students will study three further courses, which will combine elements of the more traditional subjects. So for example, the first course of this is called Creative Arts. So students will study a program called Creative Arts. That will take an interdisciplinary look uh, at a lens through the subjects of art, film, media, and photography, and will make sure that students develop skills across those subjects, but in an interdisciplinary way, so that they are looking at the arts as one um, large topic. Uh, and they will also be told which sections are art, film, media, and photography, but they will be studying it in a more holistic way across that course. Our art, media, film, and photography departments are particularly um, excellent at DLD, and the art and photography department recently won a national award for the uh, for student output. And you can see here some of our very recent student work. The second interdisciplinary subject that students will study is called Digital Futures. Again, this is a unique course designed by DLD College London and the specialists we have here, which combine elements of business, economics, computer science and esports. So students will learn uh, elements of coding, elements of computer game design, um, how that is wrapped up in the business world, what are the economics that go along with supporting that in those different industries of the future. Um, very, very important. Not many schools will offer such a course, which is quite forward thinking and really looks at what 
markets are students likely to go into and therefore how can we make sure that they've got these really up-to-date current skills this is a picture of our esports suite here um and this is i think esports club uh which is very oversubscribed at the moment by students who are not even taking uh the btec as it is uh, an oversubscribed btec at the moment so really allowing year nine students to make use of this technology whilst also really getting down deep into what it means to have a business analytical and economic brain. The third subject uh, is called people and places. I guess traditionally this might have been known as humanities, um, but we're really looking at combining all of the skills across the humanities to look at modern day um, events and comparing that with historical events. So within uh, people and places, students will be looking at elements of geography, history, psychology, sociology, and classical civilizations, and being able to look through, for example, sports or conflict through the lens of all of these traditional subjects. So they have a real understanding of what conceptual learning is, what project-based learning is, and they can understand and have a grasp of the skills needed to enable them to access courses in year 10. Students will also study a course called Careers and Professional Development in year nine. This starts the path of students thinking into their future early. We're not asking them to choose subjects or universities at this level. We're really looking for them to identify what their strengths are through a series of lessons that go on for the whole year, through going out and exploring universities, through having um, open days at universities and higher, edu college, higher education colleges, and also bringing in some excellent speakers from the world of work, from the world of business and industry. And we also have some amazing university fairs. For example, this picture here was taken just last month when uh, we had num numerous universities come in for our first university fairs um, fair of the year. We have several of these. So you can see there um, students are free to wander and ask the university staff advice on their courses and what they can offer. So we start this thinking very, very early so that students are prepared to make good decisions for themselves at GCSE and BTEC level and going on further. So Careers and Professional Development course is a timetable course, again, a bespoke course designed at DLD, and it focuses on making choices, exploring options, and how to rep represent yourself to the outside world. We have our statutory personal, social and health education program here, as is um, a legality across the UK, and that focuses on staying safe, being resilient and staying mentally healthy. We do have lots of guest speakers in, for example, just yesterday, we had our police community officer coming in to talk to students about staying safe in large cities, for example. So that is well catered for and it's well designed, it's delivered by uh, your child's tutor um, in a tutor group. So they will be very familiar with each student when they're delivering some of this more sensitive content. Sport. Sport is extremely important to us at DLD. We are right in the centre of London, so we are not blessed with huge sports fields like some of the more traditional boarding schools are. However, we really make use of the facilities that we have. Um, we do rent lots of uh, sporting facilities to take our students to. We are right next door to Archbishop Park, which provides tennis courts facilities, netball, uh, basketball, football, and track as well. And this picture on the left is our own, uh, is our gym. We have a gym in the basement of the school, which students will be using in sport lessons, but they're also uh, available to use it uh, out of school hours as well for their own personal fitness. And on the right is uh, one of our basketball tournaments um, held at a local sports facility. So we do take that very seriously. We build skills of collaboration, leadership and staying active to learn. One of the more exciting things about the year nine curriculum is our unique urban schools project. 
We really need to take advantage of our position in London. There is no point in living in one of the best, most innovative cities in the world if we're just going to stay inside all the time. So we have lots of connections in London, connections with businesses, connections with other educational institutions, and we really want to make use of those for the benefit of our students. So once a week, London truly is our classroom. Every Friday, students will have a dedicated team of teachers who will work with them on a cross-curricular project that will take six weeks. Most of this time, will be involved, students will be involved in going out, visiting various sites around, around London and beyond, and coming back to class and collating the data and research that they have found. They will be directly involved with research cycles, something that many students don't get to experience until maybe they have to do coursework at GCSE level. We want students to be involved in active research, understanding how to collect data, analyze data, evaluate it, and come up with some actions and outcomes from that from year nine. So when they do get into GCSE and A-level and BTEX and maybe the extended project qualification, they are well versed in these skills. This picture here is taken from one of our trips where we went to the Harry Potter film studios. We were given special backstage access and this is one of the classrooms. We had teachers um, from the Harry Potter set showing us real costumes, real prosthetics, and talking about how these things were designed by the designers on set. And we got to touch all of the props. And um, this is just one of the examples of places we will be visiting and uh, research that we will be conducting. And it really gives students an opportunity to get out of school one day a week and learn in the real world. So that's a very exciting um, urban schools project um, that we're, we're really excited to, to offer. We have a house system here. So if your child joins us in year nine, they will be very quickly and warmly welcomed into a house system, a bit like Harry Potter, I suppose. All of our houses are named after the tube lines which come into our area. So Jubilee House, Metropolitan House, Westminster, for example. Um, so they will be quickly be part of a house. The beauty of the house system is they will mix with students from different year groups within the school. And so they'll have friends uh, or people they know across the school when they go to lunchtime, break time, those types of things. Your child will be in a vertical tutor group, so they won't just be with year nines for their tutor group time at the start of the day for 15 minutes. They will be with all of students in what we call the upper school, that is year 9, 10 and 11. Um, so they will be uh, with students of ages, uh, year groups 9, 10 and 11 in a tutor group maximum 12 students in a tutor group that's the very maximum um, but there may be less and that tutor will know them really really well within just a few short weeks from seeing them every single day in the morning and also uh, conducting PSHE lessons with them as well. House houses do lots of things. House competitions, for example, here is a picture of house debates that happened last year. Uh, and we have lots of house chess competitions, house football competitions, house joint sexes netball competition, lots of them, as well as community trips. Uh, the most recent ones were down to Brighton and Bournemouth to really experience what it means to be uh, on a, at a wet British beach in the summertime and, and to really bond over that experience. There are a variety of leadership opportunities within the house system, being able to be representatives of your house and to therefore have your voice heard and represent your peers' voices um, to the leadership of the school. And also the tutors and house masters and house mistresses are mental health first aiders. So they're mental health first trained to really look out for signs and symptoms of when students might not be doing so well. So we can act on that very, very quickly. Enrichment is huge at DLD College London. We have a series of CCAs or co-curricular activities that run on three days during the week from four till 5 p.m. On the left here, you can see our horticulture society. On the right is one of our Duke of Edinburgh, very recent camping and hiking trips. And there are a host of others. I think there are around 30 different 
uh, co-curricular activities to choose from. And students are uh, free to choose one, two or three um, after school sessions per week to be involved with, to give them that extra boost, to give them something extra to, uh, that they really want to be involved in, to follow a real passion outside of lesson time. Boarding. We are very lucky to have boarding right in the centre of London in a very modern 18 storey building. Nobody has to travel to school if they are a boarder uh, because we are all in one building. So students will come down in the elevator in the morning and they will be in school. Um, most of the rooms are single rooms. Uh, there are some double rooms, as you can see down the bottom, which is can be separated uh, by a door. Um, the boarding rooms are excellent. They are very, very well maintained. And some of them have a beautiful view over the city of London. They are safe. We have won awards for boarding. They follow house parent system so that it is truly a home away from home. Students will be allocated to a floor of age appropriate and gender appropriate uh, other students, and they will be part of a house parent system where that house parent lives there as well and is available to them whenever it's needed. We have excellent medical provision here. We have a matron who lives here and is available throughout the day and evening times as well. And we are literally 20 seconds walk across the road to St. Thomas's Hospital, a major hospital in London, should anything more serious occur. So we are very well placed in terms of medical provision. House parents are trained sleep practitioners so that they can advise students on sleep and the importance of sleep and they are mental health first aid trained as well. So we take this very seriously, uh, our boarding provision at DLD. Facilities, we have some excellent facilities despite being uh, in a modern location in the heart of London. On the left you can see our global kitchen or our canteen I suppose you might call it. Every day, students uh, are welcome to take breakfast, lunch and dinner here. There is also a coffee shop, which is open throughout the day as well, even during, um, between during meal times. We have a live cooking station uh, where they might be making pad thai or creating sushi during the week uh, as well. Every single day, there is a live cooking station with a whole host of um, hot and cold food available as well. We also have a well-being space out the back of school that is um, fenced off and is safe and protected for students to go outside during the day. We also have a well-being garden on our third floor, which can be utilised uh, on occasions. And as you can see in the photo on the right with the blue floor, you can just about see um, inside that cage. That is our basketball and outside space. Um, not big enough really for large PE lessons or anything like that, um, but you can see that it is available for students to let off some steam, break times, lunch times, before and after school, etc. We also have a swimming pool in our basement, which again is for leisure time for students, so students can book to use the pool and the gym that we saw earlier, and on the left is a, is a, a different um, viewed picture of our basketball and tennis courts. We do have a number of options. Of course, we are a fee paying school, um, but we do offer a few options in terms of uh, scholarships. So the first one to draw attention to is the Alpha Scholarship Programme. Alpha scholarships are for both British and international students. Um, students must demonstrate some kind of academic brilliance across a range of subjects. They should be showing leadership qualities, for example, as well. So we're looking for a holistic, all round, excellent student. There are three different pathways. The first one is the Busby pathway, and this is for students who are particularly interested or gifted in humanities. The Hume pathway for economics and politics, and then the Faraday pathway for science. So these are um, scholarships with be, which have been sponsored uh, by DLD uh, for particular, these particular students. If you are selected to be an Alpha Scholar, that requires a second interview, which is specifically for the scholarship and a, a written task as well. Students chosen to be an Alpha Scholar will receive 50% off tuition fees and they are required to take part in our Alpha Scholars programme during their time at DLD, which will give them extra leadership opportunities and also separate mentorship uh, schemes as well. Um, and of course, we would expect those students to be exemplary students as well.
So that's one option of scholarship. We also have um, bursaries. Bursaries are means tested for domestic students. So looking at uh, the income of the household um, as well as the, the competency of the students. So for, for people who may, may be not able to afford tuition fees, um, the, uh, the student can have an interview with us and uh, can sit the DLD challenge, which is the online, um, the online challenge which students take uh, before meeting with us. If they are offered a place, then you can apply to be means tested for a potential bursary, uh, which would allow you to come to the school for free. Uh, college awards. College awards may be given to students who demonstrate aptitude in individual subjects. Maybe they are particularly creative or sporty and for their overall excellent contribution to school life. They are worth between 5 and 30 percent of tuition fees uh, and they are available to domestic students holding a British passport. But I know the international team also have access to some money off for college awards as well. So that is um, the same for domestic and international. This is where I'm just going to finish my presentation uh, with a photograph of our students that I took of us walking into Westminster. So this is the Houses of Parliament where we have our graduation ceremony um, with our full caps and gowns. It is an incredible day and from year nine students I'd love to be there when our first year nine cohort goes through and gets to graduate on this special day with their parents and their family in the Houses of Parliament. And this is what all of our goal is, is to watch our students graduate and have really made the best of their time at school. So I will, I will finish my talk there, my presentation, and we'll be open to any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, a great overview of the year nine program and also everything else on the um, education pathway for students at DLD College London. Um, now I did say that we'd have a short Q&A here um, so if anybody does have any questions feel free to um, add them into the chat or into the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Um, but we did have a couple of pre-event questions and one was on <clears throat> the entry requirements, Sarah, for joining um, DLD College London in year nine. Um, could you please um, talk us through that? Yes, definitely. Um, so there are there are two things that a student would need to do to apply. The first one is to have an interview with us. So it will be one of the senior college team. So that would be either myself, uh, James Kidd, who is the other vice principal, Irfan Latif, who is the principal, um, or a host of our admissions staff as well. So that would be uh, an interview not to test any subject knowledge, uh, particularly, but just to get to know the student, know what their motivations are, understand where they want to go after school, what their ambitions are, what they're interested in. And it really is more of a conversation just to get to know each other. Um, the second part is what we uh, what we call the DLD challenge. I want to emphasize it is not a test. We'll be, we will not be looking at a score or a number or anything like that. It is a test to look at how you think. Uh, your flexibility, your creativity, uh, your adaptability, um, and to give you really to give students a sense of what our courses are like. They are based on those higher order thinking skills. So it is not a test that you can prepare for or revise for. Um, it's not a test that you need any content knowledge for. It is a challenge which gives you an idea of the style of our teaching. So it's those two pathways. Probably the main thing to consider if you are an international student is that you have a minimum IELTS of a 4.5. If you don't, then the course will be very, very difficult for you to, to grasp. So we're very we're actually very strict on the English entry requirements. Um, this is not a course to teach a child English. It, that's not what it's for. It's a course designed for English speakers. Um, so that is very important to note if you are applying as an international student. OK, that's great. Thank you for clarifying that. And also the age has to be a minimum age of 13. Um, so they can't come any younger than 13 to DLD. Um, one question that's come in um, live 
is um, can year nine students apply for alpha scholarships? It's my understanding that that's for the A-level um, time. So that would be something for the future. Um, and it yes. awards for the younger, younger children. Yeah. Yeah. So for if you're thinking of your child staying here into sixth form, for example, then you could be applying for those big scholarships. Um, otherwise, you are looking at bursaries for year nine um, or um, college awards. Yes. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Um, and another question on the same topic. Um, can a student qualify for more than one type of uh, scholarship or and award? So the combining them, basically. And the answer is yes. Um, but that's not allocated against the boarding fees. It's purely for tuition. That's my understanding as well. So yeah. I hope that answers both of those questions. Thank you very much. Um, another pre-event question that came in was also, um, do the under 16s have any free periods scheduled into their timetables? Um, so no, just just like other um, other UK schools, their timetable will be will be quite full. Um, they will, of course, have two breaks in the day and also a lunch break as well. Um, so that's that's how that would work. Mm -hmm. OK, brilliant. Um, and are the under 16s permitted to use the sports gym and outdoor areas freely? I know we've um, talked about those briefly. Um, the. The gym, they um, are used under, they can use the gym under supervision because they're under 16. Um, so they're not able to just enter that freely. Um, if they're a boarder, they can use it out of hours um, freely, but with accompanied with somebody who is over 16. Um, and the outdoor areas, yes, during break times, but they, because the under 16s are in the UK, are um, what we call, what do we call them, CSAs, they're compulsory school age. So that means that they are not allowed out of the building. So you, they can go outside into our secure area, but um, we have strict um, security all around the building with passes and their passes do not allow them to exit the building outside of the school day. So once they're in school, they're in school for the day and the only time they can exit is when, when they're accompanied by a teacher. Um, and I think that's really important to understand because we are in central London and security and safety is one of our top priorities. Um, and we make sure that they're happy and healthy students with us. Uh, and is there a wellbeing zone for students um, within the college? I know we, we spoke about our wellbeing provision. Uh, can you talk them about yes. it? Our special area. <laughs> we do. We we have a well-being centre which is positioned in the school. Um, it is a, a large area which has bean bags and things like this on the floor, and it's also where our matron is located, where her office is, and it's also where our counsellor's office is as well. Um, so that's a really nice area to go for students who um, need to see the counsellor or see the matron and maybe have um, a special pass to enable them to go in there if they uh, need a particular break or chill out time um, because they do have a, a recognised need to, to do that. So it's not an area free for students to just go and sit in during lesson time, for example, but it is a dedicated area that looks after the mental well-being of students. Excellent. And another live question that's just come in following up on that is, are there any different boarding, safeguarding, welfare fair provisions specifically for year nine compared to other year groups because they're so young? Yeah, so we do have students in school who are 14 years old as well. So we're not looking at a, a huge gap in, in ages here. Of course, for boarding, students will be on a floor with students of similar age. So we wouldn't be having a 13 year old staying on a floor with a 17 year old, for example. So those rules are very tightly controlled. We uh, follow all of the British Boarding Association laws and rules regarding that. Students have a card uh, which is which only accesses the their room only and their floor. Uh, there are various safety measures in place, for example, after the curfew time and the lights out time. If the door to the corridor is opened, then an alarm is sounded as well. There is also always a house parent on duty any time of the day or night. So there is a lot of care made. Um, and especially when we have year nine students, uh, they 
obviously will be in a tutor group with students of a similar age, live in a boarding floor with students of a similar age. And there will also be a separate place in school during the day that they can go to as like their own kind of mini common room so that they're not um, fighting for what songs to put on the radio, for example, with 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a, a kind of separate, separate space for the year nines. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, if anybody has any final questions, please type them now, otherwise we will finish today's session. Um, as Sarah mentioned, this is one of a series of webinars um, for DLD College London. I know that somebody asked specifically, they wanted more information about boarding. I can tell you that the boarding webinar is scheduled for the 21st of November at 10 a.m. Um, so please do register on our website, you'll find all the details um, on the webinar page within the admissions section, visit us um, so you can find that there. Um, and yeah, there's lots of other webinars for you to have a look at. Um, so somebody's just put in a late question. Can a 16 year old student join the year nine program, Sarah? No, we think this it wouldn't be uh, advanced enough for them, essentially. So we try and make sure that when students come in, they're put on age appropriate courses as well as level equivalents. So a 16 year old coming in, we could potentially consider for the GCSE programme. Um, traditionally and typically students who are 16 will be looking to join uh, year 12. So whether that's on a BTEC course or a, an A level course. However, there may be a reason why they'd be suitable for the maybe one year GCSE program, for example, but we wouldn't be putting a 16 year old in with a 13 year old for, for learning now. Okay, fabulous. Well, thank you again, everybody for joining us today. We're very grateful that you've um, given us your time. Um, we're always welcome to, we're always happy to welcome visitors to DLD College London and to show you around. Um, for any of you that are based in the UK, we have um, actually a sixth form open evening coming up in, um, on the 24th of November. Um, and this weekend, if you're in London, we will be attending the Independent School Show. So we're available to talk to then as well. Um, so I wish everybody um, a pleasant rest of day or evening, wherever you are in the world. And um, we will send a recording of this to you um, as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks again, and um, we hope to see you soon in DLD College London. Thank you. Bye-bye.